to be in the house of the Lord on today. Can you just stand on your feet if you are glad to be in the house? Look, you done drove all the way in. So since you drove all the way in, can we just give a great God a great praise? Because he's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Listen, whether you are worshiping with us online or you are right here in the sanctuary, don't worry. You're in the right place to receive a right now blessing from the Lord. Yes. Let me tell you, listen, we have a word on today. But before that word comes forth, we want to welcome all of our visitors. Can we just take a moment and an opportunity to welcome? Can you wave at your neighbor? Can you say hello to somebody this morning? It is so good. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Rady Brown Sr., we are glad that you are with us. You are worshiping with us on today. And it is our prayer that something will be said on today that will bring you hope, that will renew your strength, that will encourage you. That is our prayer on today. Immediately after this wonderful praise team goes forth and takes us a little bit higher in worship, the next voice that you will hear will be that of our executive pastor, Dr. Anthony Cobbs. Can we thank God for our executive pastor? The scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because when I get in the house, something has to happen. If I came in tired, I'm going to leave with some strength. Anybody came to give God praise on today? Come on, let's give a great God a great praise because he's worthy. Come on, if you know that God's been great to you, you just ought to go ahead and continue to worship him. Lift your voices and lift up the name of Jesus. He's an awesome God who deserves all of our praise. Come on, don't pity Patty. Don't pity Pat him. Think about how good he's been. Go ahead and tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you appreciate who he is in your life. Thank him for waking you up and giving you yet another opportunity to start again. Anybody just ready to magnify the name of Jesus? Come on, our God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. Come on, I want you to put your hands together and just begin to bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
And he said he will never leave us and he will never forsake us and that he will never leave us alone. And we're so glad that we serve a God that cares that much about us. Hallelujah. shepherd everybody
God, you guys. He loves us despite our many flaws. He said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. building let's keep praising God come on let's keep praising God he is worthy anybody glad that you are not alone okay I'm gonna ask you that one more time anybody glad that you are not alone he's my comfort oh my God my God I love it when that praise team sings that song that song, I told Paula this before, but praise team, that song ministered to me when my mother passed. That song got me through. So every time they sing it, every time they sing it, I am just reminded of the goodness of God. Reminded that I am not alone. Hallelujah. We are so appreciative of our praise team. Can we thank God for our praise team? Come on, let's do better than that. Let's thank God for our praise team. Amen. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. It is good to see you. And we thank God for the angel of this house, our pastor, Pastor Ray D. Brown. Can we thank God for him? I want you to look around, Rock family. I want you to look around and look at how the seats are filling in. And we want to celebrate God that this ministry continues to grow. This ministry continues to grow. And there are seats that yet remain. So if you are watching online, we encourage you to come and to worship in the house of God. We know that you are connected to the family of God, but there is nothing like being amongst your brothers and sisters in Christ. As we encourage one another and we get to we get to give each other dap and hugs and high fives uh, if we if we're comfortable with that. Uh, but it's nothing like being in the in the house with brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. But we thank God for each and every one of you. And we are going to dive right into this word found in Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. We're looking at the New King James Version. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Chapter 1. I want to look at one verse. Hey, Amen. Usually churches have a significant dip in attendance after Easter. But when you belong to a church called Resurrection... A young preacher said a couple of weeks ago, you can expect the unexpected. And so we are celebrating God. Can we just thank God for our brothers and sisters and being in the house of God? Amen. 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 Second Corinthians chapter one, we're going to look at one verse, verse 20. Again, reading from the New King James Version. This is what it says. For all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Uh, for all the promises of God in him are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. I want to talk from the subject, the promise keeper, the promise keeper. You may be seated. You may be seated. When is the last time you experienced a broken promise? The chances are pretty high that someone has either broken a promise to you or a promise has been broken by you. Research suggests that the average person breaks promises daily, either intentionally or unintentionally. We might not set out to break promises, but casually end up doing so anyway. Uh, it can happen so subtly. For, for instance, we promise to go to the gym the next morning. But when that alarm goes off, we do not move. 
we promised to make it to work on time. But of course, the line was long at Starbucks. We promised to get that project done or that homework completed, but we were too busy binge watching Love is Blind. Oh, maybe I'm the only one. Maybe I had to see what was happening to AD. We promised to stop texting while driving. Mm. We promised to call people back when we know we won't. And the Lord knows how many of us have made that infamous declaration. Lord, if you just get me out of this, I promise to never do it again. Somebody promised to come to church with you today, but they didn't. Someone promised to pay you back when their little income tax check comes in, but they haven't. (laughs) This sounds personal. (laughs) Promises are made. And promises are broken every single day. But today I am on assignment to remind you that even though people make and break promises every day, there is one who is consistent. There is one who is committed. There is one who will never break a promise, never leave you hanging, never renege, never do you wrong. He says what he means and he means what he says. I'm not talking about a man. I'm not talking about a woman. I'm talking about almighty God. God is a promise keeper. And that's really it. The message of my my sermon, really, I could close my iPad and we could go home. But since I'm a Baptist preacher, I'm going to have to break this down for another 27 minutes. This is what Paul had to remind the believers in Corinth. They were so focused in on the promise of one man that Paul had to offer a lesson to them to jar them back into understanding what was really important. How did he help the Corinthians? How, how did he teach this lesson to them? Well, I see three reminders that, in, that are in the text that I want to share with us on today. First of all, Paul reminded them that the promises of God are not subjective. The promises of God are not subjective. As, as Paul opens this letter to the Corinthians, it is evident he is dealing with a conflict that had to be addressed. The Corinthians were upset with Paul. In fact, they had an attitude with him. They were angry with him because he had promised to visit them on his way back from Macedonia, and he never showed up. As a result of him not showing up, they began to question his integrity as a man of God. Paul, you lied to us. Paul, you disappointed us. Paul, you didn't keep your word. There were even some false teachers in their ears who told them, see, you can't trust what Paul told you, anything that he told you, because he is not a man of his word. And Paul had to respond and let them know, you are putting way too much weight on the promises of man. Paul helped them to understand something that is that is a relevant reminder for us even on today, that the promises of God are not subjective because God does not change. We make promises, and as I already mentioned, sometimes we break promises. But why why do people break promises? One of the reasons, one of the reasons people break promises is because people lie. I know that sounds harsh. I know that sounds, some, so for some that may be news, but people lie. Uh, uh, people make promises that they have no intention of keeping. You ever just met someone who lies so much that they forget that they are even lying? They lie so much that you start believing, don't, don't, don't look around, just look straight. Just, they lie so much that you start believing the lie and you know it's a lie, but They just lie, 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 lie. As disappointing as it is, as sad as it might be, there are people who lie and lie some more. They make promises and have no remorse breaking them because they were lying in the first place. People unfortunately lie. But another reason that people break promises is because life happens. We make a promise and have every intention of doing what we said, but things happen that are outside of our control. A sickness happens, a company downsizes, a loss of loved ones, life happens. 
And some people lie, some people experience life happening to them, but for others, promises are broken because we are led in a different direction. Here's what happened to Paul. This is what happened with Paul. He planned on visiting Corinth on his way back from Macedonia, but he didn't know that in Macedonia he would encounter some trouble. Paul had his itinerary together to visit Corinth He was only in Macedonia because God gave him a dream that told him to go to Macedonia. So God led him to Macedonia, which ended up changing Paul's plans. I told you earlier the Corinthians were mad at Paul for not showing up. But what I didn't tell you is that Paul was also mad at the Corinthians. The reason he was mad at the Corinthians because of how they were behaving. Uh, further down in the text, Paul said, I didn't, I didn't return, I didn't come back to Corinth in order to spare your feelings. Paul was ready to go off on the believers in Corinth because they were doing the most. They were sinning, arguing amongst themselves, listening to false teachers, and Paul was their mentor, their pastor, and he was upset. But because of what happened in Macedonia, because of the change of plans, instead of Paul going off on the Corinthians, he decided to write them a letter. What letter did he write? It's the very letter we just read from. The very letter we just read from, 2 Corinthians, is the letter that Paul chose to write instead of going off on the Corinthians. Come here, I don't want you to miss what just took place. Paul planned on visiting Corinth so he could set them straight. God redirected him and sent him to Macedonia. But Paul gets in trouble in Macedonia and has to cancel his plans to go to Corinth. As a result, the Corinthians get a letter instead of a lecture. That same letter is part of the Bible that we use today. Because of this, because of this redirection, we are beneficiaries of what happened with the broken promise that Paul had with the Corinthians. Friends, the God I serve will take broken promises and use those same broken promises to bring about his purpose in our lives. The Bible tells us that many are the plans of man, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. God has a way of making blessings even come out of brokenness. For someone here, I know you grew up hearing broken promises, but God used those broken promises to motivate you to be the faithful person that you are today. I know you were promised a promotion at work, and it did happen, but God used it to drive you to start a business. I know someone promised to be with you forever, and yet they are no longer there, but God used it to allow you to meet the person who is better for you. Somebody's broken promises led some of us to this city, to this church, and to that seat that you're sitting in right now. Why? Because God had to have some broken promises. That was the only thing that would move you into a season of of blessings and prosperity. In fact, you ought to take out your phone right now and you ought to send a text to somebody and say, you know what? Thank you for breaking your promise because I am better, I am stronger, and now I am positioned to get God's best for my life. Thank you for breaking the promise. Thank you for the disappointment. Thank you for the hurt. Yes, even thank you for the lies with your lying self, because now I see that your broken promises reposition me and place me in front of open doors for God's promises to be revealed in my life. Go ahead, go ahead, send it, send it, send it. Josh, make sure my phone ain't going off. Make sure. <laughs> the, promises, the promises of God are not subjective. But secondly, the promises of God are not exclusive to us alone. They're not exclusive to us alone. Paul is dealing with the attitude the Corinthians had, and something gets lost in all of this, gets lost in the shuffle. What gets lost in all of this is what happened in Macedonia. When you get a chance, go read Acts chapter 16 and 17, and it tells you what, what happens with Paul and Silas and the people who are traveling with them as they are, as they are they're going through Macedonia and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Paul went to Macedonia, he was able to free a slave girl from demonic possession. 
because Paul went to Macedonia, he was thrown into prison along with Silas. But at midnight, they were miraculously released from prison. But then they shared the gospel with the prison guard, and the guard and all of his family got saved. The Corinthians were mad. While all of this took place in Macedonia, the Corinthians were mad that Paul didn't come see them. Y'all, listen, through all of this defending himself, Paul couldn't even share with the Corinthians the celebratory news that a girl got delivered and a family got saved. But like the Corinthians, sometimes you and I focus so much on what we want and what God did not do for us that we miss what God is doing in the lives of others. I, I learned... I learned this lesson. I learned this lesson standing in a hospital room during spring break of 2019. My mother was slowly passing away. I, I was standing in that hospital room, my brothers, my brother, brothers and sisters, and we were standing around the bed and we were we were praying. And I was praying like I had never prayed before. I prayed that the Lord would spare her life. I recited scriptures on healing. I anointed her head. I anointed my siblings' head. I anointed my own head. I anointed the nurse's head, the custodian. I anointed everybody who I could get because I'm praying earnestly, believing that God is going to raise my mother up. I did everything I knew to get my request heard, but eventually she passed away. And I went into a deep depression, y'all. I, I wrestled with God. I questioned him. Why, God, would you not honor my request? Why? Your scripture says that, that the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. I began to doubt myself, Pastor Shelby. I began to say, wait a minute, maybe he didn't hear me because I sinned. Maybe I'm not living the right way. Maybe that's what's going on. I put guilt upon myself. I tried to figure it out, but I will never forget how God helped me to come out of that dark place. There was a conversation that eventually took place between me and God, and the conversation went something like this. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not saying it's exactly like this, but this is how it went. I said, God, why did you not allow my mother to live? And, and he said, son, you are blaming me for breaking a promise I never made. Ah. He was so right. I know what I asked for. I know what I hoped for. But God never told me yes. Okay, okay. All the blame I tried to direct at him, all the guilt I felt for that prayer not being answered suddenly made sense. I, I couldn't hold God to something that he never promised me. But then something greater, something greater was revealed to me. Something greater was revealed to me. God helped me to see that even though he had never made that promise to me, he did fulfill another promise. He said to me, while you are angry about a promise I never made to you, you are missing the promise that I did fulfill. God, what promise? I got a little smart. I got a little attitude, Minister Benson. So what promise did you fulfill? And God, thankfully, was able to answer me. I promised a little girl named Henrietta that if she confessed her sins, I am faithful and just to forgive her of all unrighteousness. I promised a little girl named Henrietta I would never leave her nor forsake her. I promised a little girl named Henrietta that I would wipe away her tears and take away her pain. I promised a little girl named Henrietta that if she believed in my only begotten son, that she would not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe, Anthony, you should stop trying to blame me for a promise I never made and start celebrating me for the promise that I kept to your mama. I don't know who that's for today, but God sent me by to remind you he is a promise keeper. You don't believe me? Just look around at the row that you're sitting on. Let's look at the people on the row. Look, look, it, 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 the only reason that some of us are here today is because God is fulfilling a promise. And it's a promise that he made to somebody else. When we didn't have sense to pray for ourselves, somebody's grandmother, Paul, Paul, 
big mama, auntie, prayed that God would watch over you. They prayed you off that addiction. They prayed you out of that abusive relationship. They prayed you come down from off that pole. They prayed while you were locked up. They prayed you through four years of school. They prayed you made it home safely. The truth be told, the only reason that you are here is because God is a promise keeper. Anybody glad that God keeps his promises? Anybody glad that he's a promise keeper? The promises of God are not subjective. The promises of God are not exclusive to us. But here's what I've been rushing to get to right, right here, here. Here's what it is. The promises of God are guaranteed by God. Ah, that didn't move you. I got to explain it. I got to explain it. I got to explain it. I really, really could have started right there, but it is important to determine that God's promises are not subjective, nor are they exclusively just for us. But the promises of God are certain, and they, they will come to pass. Paul wrote that the promises of God are twofold. He said they are yes and amen. Let the church say yes and amen. When Paul says the promises are yes, he is speaking of the assurance of the promise. The assurance of the promise. He is saying when the promise comes from God, not man, not our hopes and wishes, not our imagination, but when the promise comes from God, the promise is already approved. Okay, okay. I, I, y'all, y'all making me work. Y'all making me work. When I was a young man, I was. I remember going to purchase a vehicle. I needed to get a vehicle, and I was. I was enamored by the most popular vehicle in America at that time, and I. I wanted to get this forest green Jeep Grand Cherokee. I wanted to be like the yuppies. I wanted to act like I had some money, but I was young and broke. I walked into the dealership, test drove that Jeep, and eventually went back to the finance office. And you know what happens back there? I'm not even going to lie. I was nervous. I was, I was scared because a brother was young and broke. And my credit just wouldn't get it. Because of that, I was at the mercy of the dealership and whatever financial institution they chose to give me. I had to take whatever they wanted to to give me. They ran my credit, came back. They came back and forth about five times. You know how they do. I got to talk to the manager. You ain't, you're not talking. Just tell me, man. Just, Just tell me. Just say what's up. Uh, they finally came back and said, Mr. Cobbs, well, we can't do the Jeep Grand Cherokee, but we can put you in this used Mazda 626. (laughs) No swag. (laughs) Uh, You ever drove a car with an attitude? You're just mad. You're just, uh, (laughs) just mad, just mad. I remember getting that car, paying a car note that was probably just as the equivalent of the Grand Cherokee because of that interest rate. Don't leave me out here, y'all. I'm, I'm the only one. <laughs> but I didn't get the Grand Cherokee. Years later, after I graduated with my doctorate, I remember saying to myself, I want to get, I want to reward myself. I, I, it was a long process, and I said, I want to get a new car. And I, and I, let me try something, let me try something different. I went to my credit union. I met with the banker and they said, Mr. Cobbs, we can help you. Deacon Gibbs, they gave me what's called a pre-approval letter. And when I say having that letter made me feel like Warren Buffett, I walked up into the dealership, kicked the door open, snapped to the cell, hey, Bring me some water. Bring me. (laughs) Having that letter in my hand was power. 
having that letter in my hand was authority. I wasn't being arrogant, but it was something about having that yes that hit differently. I already had the backing of my financial institution, so it gave me more leverage. And that's what Paul is telling the Corinthians in the text, that when you hold in your hand the promises of God, you already have a pre-approval. How do you know when it's the promises of God? Because God always provides for what he promised. If it's God, you'll have what you need. If it's God, it won't be any confusion. If it's God, you can walk with confidence, shut down fear, and praise him that you already have a yes. Paul said the promises of God are yes. Let the church say yes. You have a pre-approval when you have the promise of God. You don't have to ask about it. You don't have to question it. It's already yes. Paul said that to the Corinthians. He, he's making sure that they understand that he's focusing, refocusing them away from worrying about the promises of man and helping them to, to recognize the power of God's promise. That word, that, but then secondly, secondly, this is what he says. He says, not only do you have the yes, but you also, the promises of God are also amen. The church say amen. amen. That word amen means agreement with the promise. Just how you just agreed. You just agreed. You agreement with the promise. This is where you and I come into play. We agree that God has approved certain things for our lives. Anybody agree that God has approved certain things for your life? He's, he's approved things for your life. Uh, you're, you're in agreement with it. Uh, that, that God promised us things and that they are guaranteed if they come from him. We are in agreement with that. We must agree that the promises of God throughout the Bible are fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. The promise of redemption fulfilled by Jesus. The promise of salvation fulfilled by Jesus. The promise of forgiveness fulfilled by Jesus. We agree that there are promises that were filled in the Bible. There are promises that are being filled now. And there are promises that are yet to be fulfilled. There are promises in our individual lives. There are promises in the life of this church. There are promises for generations to come. But we must also agree that none of these promises is possible without Jesus. Okay. This, this is what he's saying. Remember I told you, that I, I, I told you I wanted to buy that Jeep Grand Cherokee. Remember I told you about that? I, 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 what I didn't tell you is this. What I didn't tell you is that actually they told me that I could have purchased it. As broke as I was, minimal credit, I still could have driven off with that vehicle. But they required one thing, a cosigner. Well, I called my mama, I mean my person who I thought for sure... <laughs> for sure would be down <laughs> and she said no I can't do it it costs too much and I can't have my name on the line that thing that I wanted wasn't meant for me it wasn't affordable to me it was more than I could handle. And thankfully, I had a co-signer who had the sense to stop me before I made a mistake. But the promises of God are already approved. The promises of God are already yours. The promises of God are guaranteed. Well, how is that possible? It is be not because of your name. Not because of my name. Not because of Pastor Brown's name. The promises of God are guaranteed because of the name of Jesus. Because long ago, watch this, God ran a spiritual credit check on mankind and saw that we got late payments, judgments, repossessions, we don't pay our bills. Who are we kidding? We are just spiritually and morally bankrupt. So God knew in order to bless us with the promises he wants for us, we needed a cosigner. He gave us a cosigner whose credit is perfect. 
because he was born without sin. He gave us a cosigner who's never been delinquent because he's always on time. He gave us a cosigner who's never gone over his limit because he has all power in his hands. And guess what? He gave us a cosigner who will never miss a payment because he already paid it all. He paid it all on a hill called Calvary. He stretched out on a tree, pierced in the side. He who was without sin became sin. He was buried in a borrowed tomb on Friday, stayed there all day Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, he kept his promise. How do I know? Because he got up. He got up with all power in his hand. That's my co-signer, and his name is Jesus. And whatever I ask in his name, God's going to give it to me. God's promises are yes and amen, and my God is a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are a promise keeper. We thank you, Lord, that you see past all of our faults, all of our flaws, but you see our needs. We thank you that your promises are not subjective, that your promises, your promises, Father, your promises are not just for us. And your promises are guaranteed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that simple reminder. There is someone here, Father, we pray that you will remind them that you are a promise keeper. And that the only reason that they're here or only reason they're watching online is because you, you blessed them with another day. You blessed them to see this day, to hear this word to remind them that you are a promise keeper. Father, we pray that you will help us to not hold people hostage for broken promises. Help us to see that the only one who never changes is you. Help us not to hold ourselves under guilt shame because of broken promises but help us to recognize that the only guaranteed promises come from you have your way with us Lord bless us as only you can Lord in the name of Jesus we thank you and we praise you let every heart say amen God bless you, Resurrection. us the opportunity for salvation and there may be someone here today that heard that word on today and you've been dealing with broken promises but today you found out there is only one promise keeper he has promised us life eternal he has promised us new life. If that is you on today, and you want to give your life to God on today, the only promise keeper. It is as simple as A, B, C. 
A, admit that you need God, and without him you are lost in sin. B, believe that Jesus is the son of the living God, and he died for our sins. And C, confess him as Lord over your life. It's just that simple. If that is you on today, we invite you to text the word JOIN to 830-839-8074. All you have to do is text. And when you text that number, the promise keeper, you are invited, you are welcome, and to the body of Christ, to the family of God, and we'll be happy to be your family here at Resurrection. So if that is you on today, go ahead and text JOIN to 830-689-8074. He won't give up on you. My God is able. your seats at this time in our service we have have y'all enjoyed the worship service on today did you enjoy that mighty word the promise keeper at this time we are going to go forth in service and it gives us an opportunity to give back to God all that he has given to us has God been good to us has God been good to us at this time, we are going to go. It is time to give. Amen. And there are so many ways that you can give. On behalf of our pastor, we just want to thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Because of your continued support, the homeless receive shelter, the hungry are fed, and the word of God goes forth throughout this world. So we thank you for your continued giving. Uh, today you can text 77977 to RBC1 and give, and you can also give on your way out of the sanctuaries. We have so many options for you to give on today. Don't you thank God for the digital age? Y'all remember when we used to have the pastor played around? 
we thank God for the digital age. So thank you for your continued support. Amen. Amen. At this time in our service, it is the time that we remember the greatest sacrifice in all of humanity. When Jesus stepped into time and space and did for us what we could do not do for ourselves, while we were yet in sin, Christ died for you and for me. If you did not receive your elements when you came into the sanctuary, would you raise your hand? We want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to remember, to commemorate the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. How many of you know that the blood will never lose its power? We thank and praise God for the opportunity to come in and remember what he has done for us. On the night our Lord and Savior was betrayed, he took the bread and after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which was given for you. Take, eat, let us eat. In that same manner, he took the cup and he said, this represents my blood, which is a new covenant. That means it's a promise. Take and drink all of it. thank you on this day. We thank you for the blood that was shed just for me, God. Just for us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Oh God, we ask as we leave this place, let us not forget what you did for us. But I'm so glad that's not how the story ends. But you get up and you rose again that we may have power 
to live in this world on today. Oh God, I ask now, God, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, be with us, oh God, until we meet again. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. And all the people of God said, amen, amen. If you need prayer on today, our prayer warriors will be positioned right up here at the front. Please, if you have a prayer request, we will pray with you on today.